to episode 100. Yeah, episode 100. You heard that correctly. Of Driftless Knitting. My name is Jennifer. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Driftless Knitter. I'm coming to you today from Wisconsin, from South Central Wisconsin, I guess, just outside Madison, um, on Friday, September 4th. Yes, <laughs> Friday, September 4th at almost 2.30 in the afternoon. I am so excited to be here. I'm so excited that it is episode 100. That is just so crazy to think about. That I've done 100 episodes. Um, I thought about, right before I started recording, I thought about um, putting together a package for a giveaway for my 100th episode. However, my brain is a little, I don't know what you'd say. It's a little, I was going to say like sporadic. Um, I just don't know if I have the brain space or the time, frankly, to um, be able to put together a really great giveaway and then have time to pick a winner, bring it to the post office, do all that stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know and who haven't watched before, um, well, for one thing, hello. <laughs> also, I am about 39 and a half weeks pregnant <laughs> with my first baby, um, baby boy, and he could come anytime now. Um, he could come today. Well, not likely, but he could come tomorrow. <laughs> Um, so just the the amount of time and commitment, I didn't want to commit to doing a big giveaway right now because I just don't know what my life is going to look like, you know, 12 hours from now, um, which is kind of unsettling, <laughs> honestly. But I next time I film, I will have a giveaway that probably won't be for a while um, just because we are just expecting you know our baby any day now so it probably won't be until like October when I do that but um I figure I'll I'll just have more time to kind of curate a really really good prize for you guys so thank you so much to everybody for being here for subscribing for commenting um all over all these years of me doing this podcast I'm looking back, it really has been an incredible journey. Um, I started podcasting, what year was it? I want to say, was it 2015? Fall of 2015. Um, actually, it was around this time, uh, the beginning to middle of September would be, so this would be my my podcast anniversary as well, which is really cool. Kind of fell right in line there. I didn't even think about that. Um, but yeah, I started podcasting 2015, which means it's been five years. I'm pretty sure either that or it was 2016. I'm not sure. It's been four or five years now. Um, and you guys have been with me in three different apartments, three different towns. Um, my engagement, my marriage, and now my first baby. So... I just, I am so thankful to everybody who's stuck around, who has, even if, even if this is the second episode you've ever watched, um, thank you for being interested in my creative endeavors and wanting to come back and, um, see what I've been up to. It's just so much fun and I love, I just love sharing what I love with people who, have similar interests to me and I know you guys you know appreciate um, what I do here so yay so anyway episode number 100 
cheers to that. I am drinking some leftover coffee from this morning. I um, jealously hoard my coffee. If I don't drink it all in the morning, I save it because I am lit limiting the amount of caffeine I drink. Um, you know, I, I allow myself like that much coffee a day. So if I don't drink all of it right away in the morning, you better believe it's going in the microwave later on and I'm going to be heating it up. So I have a little bit left in here. I have it in my Lego mug with my name on it. This is such a nostalgic mug. I got this when I was a kid, um, when my dad and my stepmom took us to, took my sister and I to the Mall of America up in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. At the time, um, they lived in Wisconsin pretty much my entire life. I'm originally from Northern Illinois. I grew up there with my mom. Um, but my dad has lived in Wisconsin since I was like six or so. Um, so Wisconsin now is my home state and I live here full time, but even then was kind of like my, like my second home. Um, and they were living in Wisconsin and we drove up to the Mall of America. We used to do that. We did that quite a few years in a row. It was like one of our summer traditions when we were on summer vacation. And one of the things we loved to do was go um, to Camp Snoopy, which now is like, I don't know, Nickelodeon World or something. <laughs> they have all these Nickelodeon rides and stuff. Um, but it used to be Camp Snoopy. And we would ride the rides and get some like really fun food and, you know, do all those fun things. And then um, Legoland was right off of Camp Snoopy. So that was like one of our favorite Things. we did that like half the day we spent half the day there and then we went to like our favorite stores um, and used our allowance money back when I, I just remember saving up for the Mall of America trip and I was like I have $50 yeah and now I'm like okay yeah that wouldn't go very far I mean it didn't really go very far then either um, yeah as a kid you're you think you're rich and then you realize how much things actually cost um, but anyway that's beside the point. We, my sister and I both got uh, Lego mugs when we were there. I don't remember which trip this was, if this, if this was our first trip there when we got these or a later trip, but I remember as a kid drinking out of this, um, not always coffee, but sometimes coffee. I was allowed a little bit of coffee when I would go to my dad's. That was always like a treat. And I would put like boatloads of sugar in it, of course, cause I was a kid and, um, yeah, I wonder how that, if that was such a good idea now that I think back as an adult, I'm like giving a child coffee with like three teaspoons of sugar in it, I was probably pretty hyper after that. <laughs> but anyway, it just takes me back to that time and I love using this. Um, so got that out of the, the cabinet today and yeah. Mm. So good. Okay. So today I have quite a few things to show you. Um, I'm really excited about quite a lot of these things. My, my fall and autumn loving heart has been reawakened. We, even though it's only September 4th, we have been having some beautiful, early fall weather and I know it's technically still summer and we're I think tomorrow we're supposed to get into the 80s possibly but for the last few days it's been in the 70s or even 60s September 1st I woke up and it was like 45 46 degrees there was fog it was gorgeous it was cold I opened up the screen door or our sliding glass door to let all the cool air in and it was just marvelous. So nice. Um, I immediately got out my mold cider candle, which I am burning right now as well. For the past few days, I've had that going. Um, and it just smells like fall and beautiful. Oh, it's just amazing. We took a walk last night and you, it was like in, it was like 70, maybe low or high 60s and there was a cool breeze blowing. It's just fabulous. So my mind, my heart, my soul has been turning to autumn, 
fall projects. Um, and I am so, so excited about them. <laughs> so excited. So I'm going to start off, I suppose, with um, a couple of finished objects that I do have. And you've seen both of these before. Um, I should say that it's been about two weeks since I podcasted the last time. And I'm really glad I was able to fit in another podcast. Like I said, this is probably going to be the last one until mid-October or so. Um, just because I'm assuming that the first month with our new baby is going to be a little hectic. <laughs> I might throw together, depending on like how things are going, might throw together a couple little like vlogs or something. I'm really, really lucky that my husband gets to spend a lot of time at home that first month um, from his job. So I, you know, I'll have a little bit of help um, here at home. But yeah, I mean, obviously the first few weeks are going to be, there's going to be no podcasting, nothing like that. But maybe by the end, you know, by the beginning of October, we'll be in a good groove and I'll be able to do a little vlogging or take a few little videos or something about what I'm working on. So, um, because you do know I'm going to keep working on my knitting. That's gonna be my, my here honey, hold the baby for a few minutes. I just need to knit a row because it's my sanity. It's, I hardly go a day without knitting or doing any of my other um, hobbies. So yeah, that's definitely a must. Okay. First thing I have done here is these cute little tube baby socks that I was working on last time. I think I had cast on the second one in the last episode and I finished these um, pretty quickly after that. So yeah, they are just a toe up. I started with a Judy's Magic cast on, on size US1 needles. They're a toe up sock. I increased, I think I cast on eight on each needle, so 16 total. And then I increased until I got to 32 stitches. 32 or 36? I think it's 36 actually. So 36 stitches, and then I just knit in the round. As you can see, they don't have a heel. Um, and I was kind of cued onto this. I've seen baby tube socks and little kid tube socks before, but um, I had been knitting some baby socks the last few months and wanted to knit a pair or a few pairs that would maybe fit him later on as he started growing. Um, and I was just commenting on how hard it is to sort of guess and, um, you know, guess where to place the heel on like toddler socks. And somebody commented that I should just do a tube sock, which I was like, oh yeah, I should try that. So um, the only thing is that they might not stay on as well without the heel, because babies pull their socks off all the time. Um, not saying they would stay on with the heel, but you know, it might have a better chance. <laughs> um, and uh, my friend Emily suggested a pattern. I still have to look this up, but it's apparently one that, um, has like ribbing that like, like a diagonal ribbing or something that goes like around the sock so that um, it stays on a little bit better, which I think is a great idea. But I haven't cast on another pair. Um, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a break from baby knits, even though I do have a couple more I wanna make for when he is a little bit older. Um, but you'll see I have a couple of things going that are not baby knits right now. Um, but yeah, this is a fingering weight yarn. It is a one of a kind colorway from a homespun house. It's a lot more blue than it looks, whoa, <laughs> than it looks in the video. Um, it's coming out a lot more green, even though it does have some green undertones, it's not quite that green. And this was just a mini skein that I had picked up at one of the shows that Molly was vending at um, when she lived here in Wisconsin. So I think it was like two years ago. Um, so yeah, baby socks. Let me just reach down here and pick this one up. Um, it might take me a little bit, hang on. Ooh, 
Okay, not as bad as I thought. Um, <laughs> my next finished object is also a baby knit. And you also saw this last time. I was uh, getting pretty far on it. Um, but this is the Nick and Nora pullover sweater by Knit Moxie. I forgot to look up her name, her like real name before starting to film. So I apologize. But if you search for, she might go by Knit Moxie on her Ravelry um, like design page. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely on Instagram. So this was a test knit that I did. I finished it uh, last Saturday and the test knit technically ended or the um, pattern was released last Friday. So I got most of it done. I had just, ha I just had like a couple of inches of the second sleeve and the cuff to do. I had already gotten my notes in um, because I had done one of the sleeves before that and the second sleeve is done the exact same way. Um, so I was able to get my notes in and kind of um, give her a little bit of feedback before that pattern went out. So I think this was a successful test knit. <laughs> um, what else about it? It is done, it is a garter stitch, you can see that. It was very fun to make. Garter stitch though, it is amazing how much more yarn you need and how um, much slower it goes because you're not, I think um, stockinette stitch, you just get more fabric because it's flatter, whereas garter stitch sort of like bunches up together um, and is really springy. So you just have to knit more um, fabric to get the same size. So, it features this really cool rolled collar um, and these shoulder plackets with some short rows so that it fits really nice around his shoulders. And then the same rolled um, effect for the cuff, for the cuffs. You can see that. You do have to seam the sides of the sweater it has a little bit of like a split hem. Um, you do, you do the, it's kind of an interesting construction. You do the um, collar in the round and then you go back and you knit the two sides separate, seam them together and then pick up for the sleeves. So it's, it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, it's gonna be just a nice, comfy, cozy, boxy sweater uh, for this winter. And I used the Neighborhood Fiber Company yarn in the Mount Vernon colorway. And this is a 100%, it's their studio sock base, and it's 100% superwash merino. It has 400 yards per 100 gram. And I picked this up when I was visiting my best friend, Caitlin, in uh, D.C. She lives, she works in D.C. and lives in... Arlington, Virginia, just, you know, across the, across the way where a lot of uh, DC workers um, live in Virginia rather than in the city. Uh, or it's technically still the city, but it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, we, when I was out there, we went to um, Alexandria, Virginia, which is just a short train ride away from where she lives. And I was able to visit Fiberspace, um, which is a really popular and kind of famous. I mean, it's, it's on, you know, it's, it's really well known, I would say in the knitting community, um, almost like Pearl Soho or something like that. Uh, fiber space. I definitely knew about it before going there and I was really excited, uh, to get to go. Um, they've since moved locations, so I need to go back. I was actually supposed to go back to, um, DC this past spring, which is really sad. Uh, then COVID hit and we weren't traveling at all, obviously, and that plan got scrapped. But yeah, we were going to go for our like baby moon, baby honeymoon type thing. It was really just an excuse to take one last like trip, just the two of us. <laughs> um, so I guess that is kind of a baby moon. Um, and we were going to drive out there, stay with her. It was going to be kind of like this fun East Coast thing that we could, you know, stay with friends and not have to spend too much, also get time with them, um, and then get time together and do some fun things around there. But yeah, that didn't happen. 
So, um, yeah, this is one of the skeins I picked up back, way back then. Um, I actually have a vlog about uh, traveling to DC on my channel because that was a few months after, or maybe that was e even a year after I had started filming. Honestly, the timeline, especially with my brain being all mixed up, I don't know. But anyway, it exists. It's on my channel. <laughs> um, it's going to be an earlier episode-ish. Um, and I, I do kind of a series when I do travel called the Driftless Knitter Travels. So yeah, there's one for, for my trip out to DC. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that. <laughs> I don't think I have too much else to talk about with this. I hope I'm not missing anything. Um, the pattern is available now and it was knit on a size US 3 needle. Yes, I believe so. So anyway, very happy that that is done. Um, so now let's move on to works in progress. I thought I would show this off because I did do a little bit of work on it over the past couple weeks even though you probably won't be able to tell. Don't think you'll be able to tell. But it might be the last time I show it for a while. So, just thought that would be good. Oh goodness. This is the, <laughs> very tangly, and I'm in the middle of a row because I got interrupted yesterday when I was knitting it by my husband coming home and then wanting to take a walk. So I just put my, put my knitting away. But this is the, Orthangular shawl, I believe. Let's make sure I get that spelling right. I think I said it wrong, so I'm just gonna put that up there. It's by Emily Green. It is a fingering weight sweater, not sweater, it's a fingering weight shawl <laughs> that uses quite a bit of yarn. I'm already one ball of yarn um, into it. This is my second one that I just joined and I'm trying to see if I can, I do have a third one, but I'm not sure if I'm going to need it. So that's still caked up or, oh my gosh, it's not caked up yet. <laughs> still skeined up. This is Knit Circus Yarns Opulence Base, which is an 80-10-10 Merino Cashmere Nylon. It is in the Cut the Mustard colorway. And this is a test knit for work. So I do work for Knit Circus Yarns, if this is your first time um, joining me here on YouTube. Um, and I occasionally get to do some test knits. I have had this shawl on the needle since March or April. No, yeah, since April. Um, it was about a month or so into the, our shutdown. Um, for a while, we nobody was going into work um, our website was still up, but we were only selling what we already had in stock and someone would go in about once a week and do shipping. And that was like the extent of Knit Circus being open. Um, in June, we decided to have people, have a couple employees come into the studio to start dyeing up yarn because we had like backlogs of people ordering dye to order <laughs> stuff. So we had a couple people come in, start dyeing yarn, being as cautious as possible. We haven't had any issues yet. And then now we do have a couple more people going in and out, doing some processing, things like that. Our store is still closed. I don't know at all when we're gonna be opening that. Um, just because our cases, I just heard today that Dane County, which is Madison, Madison is in Dane County, um, which is where Knit Circus is. We just added like 150 cases in the last day or so. So it's still a problem. It's still an issue, even though things are, you know, opening up and people are feeling safer by like mask mandates and stuff. Um, we just, I don't know, it's, we're not, we're not like a grocery store. We're not a necessity. We are a, you know, I don't know, a luxury. And we have everything you could possibly want online. 
you know, that's in our store. It's all online, available for purchase. And we're offering curbside pickup now. So, you know, there's just no, like, it's fun to be able to go into the yarn store and see the yarn and look around and walk around and talk to people. But right now, that's just not an option for us. We'd want to keep everybody safe. Um, and yeah, because we are still able to sell our product online, that's just the safest option for us right now. But anyway, <laughs> that's just a little update on Knit Circus if you are, if you are curious. Um, but yeah, so this is a sample for them, for us. Oh my gosh, that color just totally washed out. It does not like it. This is a very beautiful orangey, burnt orange, gold color. It's more gold than it is burnt orange, I should say. Um, like I said, I'm in the middle of a round, so there's the points there. It's going to be pretty big. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. It's fun. It takes a long time though. It's not mindless at all at all. So in one sitting, I can do a few rows, but it takes me maybe like 10 minutes a row. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, about 10 minutes a row. So I usually only get about four to five rows done in one sitting, which yeah, because either then my brain needs a break, I get interrupted, or I just don't have any more time. To knit like you know I have an hour or I have 40 minutes or something like that and I get just like a few rows done um yeah or like I said I get kind of I need a break and I just need to put it down and work on something else that happens a lot <laughs> so um this did kind of go on the back burner for quite a while while I was working on baby stuff um and then I have a couple of like personal projects that are just I hate to say it a little more fun this is kind of homework knitting as much as I hate to say that, um, it does kind of feel like that. So I really do want to get it done. I really want to get a good chunk of it knit on. This weekend, maybe I will just like focus, focus on this. As I, I'm saying that and I'm thinking about this next thing I'm going to show you and I'm like, oh yeah, that's never going to happen. <laughs> but I do, I am going to work on it um, tonight get a few rows done. I'm going to work on it tomorrow. So maybe it's just like every day I just get a few rows done and eventually it's got to fi be finished, right? Eventually, you think. It's logical. <laughs> I forgot to say what bag this is in. This is in my Chasing Acorns large snap bottom bag. Um, I love this bag. It is my, it is Hogwarts, um, like Quidditch. I guess not necessarily. Well, yeah, it has Quidditch at Hogwarts on there, but just Quidditch in general. Broomstick advertisements, things like that, which is fun. Um, it does have a drawstring at the top. It has this awesome uh, carabiner and the string that I have to cut off still, even though I've had this for about a year, and a uh, wrist, kind of a wrist holder. And then the cool thing, and I know I've showed this on the podcast before, but the cool thing is that it has these snaps and they can fold in and then you get a, like a, oops, you get like a box bottom if you fold those in and snap it. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it has a plastic, not plastic, but like a vinyl inside so that it kind of protects your project from, um, I don't know, water, coffee, rain, um, what else? It's just, it's just nice to have that extra protection and it's like, I don't know, it's kind of cool because it's smooth, like your stuff's not gonna get caught on there or anything like that. Um, but yeah, those, we do have some in stock at Knit Circus if you want to buy your own. Um, not the Quidditch ones anymore, but we have some other really fun ones. Um, so those are available online at knitcircus.com. I promise you, this is not a uh, paid advert. Well, it kind of is because I work there, so they do pay me. Weird. Is this is this podcast sponsored by Knit Circus? It might be. <laughs> um, okay, not officially. I should say that not officially sponsored. Um, my next project that I want to show you, I started last week. 
uh, the day that I finished my Nick and Nora pullover on Saturday, I started a new pair of socks. And I'm really excited about these because I haven't knit socks, especially socks for myself. I've knit baby socks and I knit Seaver a pair of socks, my husband, but um, I haven't knit myself a pair of socks almost all year, which is absolutely ridiculous because I used to knit socks. Last year I knit, I knit a ton of them. Year before I slacked and I only knit like a couple pairs. Um, but I love knitting socks. It's my go-to project when I just want something comforting and mindless. Even Seaver knows that. The other day I was like trying to debate what project I was gonna grab. We were watching TV and I'm like, okay, do I work on this? Do I work on that? Or do I work on my socks? And he's like, I think you're in the mood for socks. You're, you're needing something comforting that you know really well. And I was like, how funny. I mean, we've been together for a long time, so he's obviously seen me you know, with my knitting and what projects I love, but still for like him who isn't always paying attention to what I'm knitting and working on, um, for him to just know that like socks are my comfort knitting was interesting. That was really cool. So I was like, you know, I think you're right. <laughs> so this pair of socks is in my um, Twisted Thread, Twisted Threads bag which I don't believe that she's making project bags or dyeing yarn right now. I do have some yarn that she dyed for me and sent along, I think for a get your yarn wishes granted a few years ago. Um, I've had this project bag for a couple of years now and I love it. This is my go-to autumn bag. I just absolutely love it. And in here, I have my first autumnal project. This is out of Hagrid's Pumpkin Patch, which is by Bumblebee Acres Yarn, whom I love. And this is on their Squishy Sock Base, which is 75 Merino and 25% Nylon. It's a fingering weight. Um, and it's Harry Potter inspired, of course, Hagrid's Pumpkin Patch. I bought this last year at um, Stitches Midwest in Schaumburg, Illinois. And I had I bought it with the full intention that these would be my autumn socks. I love knitting with a theme. I love when a new season starts. Sometimes, this year was a little different, but when a new season starts, I like switch gears, I change out my project bags, I kind of change like what um, colors I'm working with. If there's like a themed, a themed colorway or something named after, like I get all into it. So, um, and my progress keepers change. I'm just looking at this sock. It has a fall progress keeper on it. So yeah, love that. So these are always intention to be my my 2020 fall sock project. And I caked this up a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. And as soon as I finished my Nick and Nora pullover, I cast these on. So this is what it looks like. They are still dyeing this colorway, though I think like fall yarns, unless they have any, they might once they're doing, cause I, hang on, let me start over. Bumblebee Acres did their autumn update a few weeks ago. I did purchase two skeins of yarn from them. I'm not ashamed to say it, <laughs> even though I look a little sheepish. Um, I could have done so much more damage, honestly. I almost did, but um, I held back and I just got two skeins of sock yarn that I know I will use eventually. Um, didn't have anything like, you know, particular in mind. So I just went with, I think I went with the squishy sock base. So I could do a cowl, I could do socks again, I could do whatever. Um, and I noticed that Hagrid's Pumpkin Patch was in the offerings for that update, though it was all dyed to order. So I do know that once they do, once they fulfill their dyed to order, once in a while they have like extra skeins. And if you're a yarn dyer or you know anything about yarn dyeing, 
Sometimes you have to fill a pan. Sometimes, you know, you have an extra skein of undyed yarn. You throw it in. You sell it later, you know, as a ready to ship. So I think they do that once in a while if, you know, the circumstances are right. So there's a chance, slight chance, you could still get this yarn. But like I said, this is Hagrid's Pumpkin Patch. Has a like tan background with pops of bright, like oak, not bright, but like ochre, yellow, and like a really beautiful pumpkin, rusty orange. I'm really enjoying knitting with this. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful. But I am not going to show you the full sock yet because, believe it or not, I am designing a new sock pattern. I haven't done this in months. I haven't released a pattern, I don't think, since I got pregnant. Um, maybe since last fall. That may be the last time I released something. Um, and that was my heart. I want to say it was my harvest shawl last year. So I do have some patterns up on Ravelry and also a few patterns on knitcircus.com. We have some downloadable, uh, digital download patterns available. Um, and I sort of, what was the reason why I stopped? I just, I don't know. The harvest shawl I loved but it didn't do as well as I had hoped. And that was a little discouraging, honestly. Um, real talk. <laughs> so, you know, patterns don't always like as much as you love them, as much as people, you know, think they're beautiful. Not everyone's going to buy it. Not everyone's going to knit it. It just happens. So I really sort of my my inspiration, my mojo for designing just sort of like flew out the window um, after that. And I haven't, and then I got pregnant and I haven't really had much desire to, I've like designed a couple of things and I haven't written up the patterns. There was a shawl, a two color shawl that I really enjoyed knitting. And then when I finished it, I was like, mm, maybe not. And I never wrote up the pattern. Seaver socks that you saw earlier this year, I still have plans to write that pattern up. I made that up and everything, never wrote up the pattern. Yeah, it's just been that sort of a trend. <laughs> this this one I'm really hoping breaks the trend. Um, oh, my mom's cowl. Oh my gosh, I've done this like quite a few times this year. That's so crazy. I knit a cowl for my mom for Mother's Day and her birthday, and I never wrote up the pattern. That one would be super easy. I actually still think about that one sometimes. I think it would be good to, it was originally knit in a DK weight, and I think I wanna knit it with a fingering and a mohair pulled together. I just have to find the right yarn. So yeah, anyway, beside the point, but this one, I'm showing you the back here. I know it looks super long and skinny, but there's a reason it's getting like pulled into the front because of the patterning that's on there. But once it's blocked, it'll look a lot better. So I'm almost done. I've knit the leg and now I need to do a short cuff. I decided on the back of the leg, I wanted to do ooh, um, some ribbing. So this isn't what's on the front. It's completely different <laughs> on the front. Um, I also did a, I usually do a fish lips kiss heel. Um, this looks similar to a fish lips kiss heel, but it's not. I did a German short row heel, which I will hopefully be able to write into the pattern instead of having to um, direct you to a different pattern. I love the fish lips kiss. And when I knit socks for myself, I haven't tried this one on, but um, it's so intuitive the way that she does the short rows I really do really like it but I thought um for for a pattern it's hard when you're you know giving direction and then you say 
I can't tell you how to do this heel. You have to go buy this other pattern and figure it out on hers and then come back to mine. You know, and a lot of people have their own heel. I know when I do patterns from other people, a lot of times I throw in the fish lips kiss heel because I don't want to do the heel that they talk about or, you know. So if you have your favorite heel, that's great. But if you're kind of a novice sock knitter or you're somebody who just wants to be told, you know, how to do something, you don't want to mess with directions or changing or modifying, um, it is kind of a bummer when you see that direction when it's like, insert your favorite heel. I use the fish lips kiss heel. You can buy it here. And that's all, you know, which is what I've been having to do with my, my patterns because I do like to knit that heel so much. So I did the German short row heel. Um, it is very similar in numbers. There's just a few little differences. Um, and yeah, that's how it came out. Still probably going to fit roughly the same. And yeah, I am very, very close to being done. I do have a progress keeper on here. It's on the front, so I'm just going to sort of tip this over so you can see. I don't know if... My phone was having trouble last time, too, focusing in on a small little object, so... I don't know how that's going to work. Oh, jeez, come on. Needle, get out of there. So this is a progress keeper by the Gnome Knitter, who is a polymer clay artist, <laughs> peeking in there, um, <laughs> in Nome, Alaska. She, I got this quite a few years ago as well. Um, and I really like that little charm for autumn. It's a pumpkin spice scone, pumpkin scone. So yeah, I'm all, I'm all feeling the, the autumn feels here, the autumn vibes. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get that pattern written up, um, hopefully this weekend. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to take photos, but I figured if I have it formatted, ready to go, um, I could take pictures of the first sock and like have that kind of ready um, and then knit the second one. I'm not going to publish these probably until the end of the month or the beginning of October. Um, that's just my plan right now because I have a second pair that I wanna do and I kinda thought it'd be fun to do like a, an autumn set, like sock set type thing. So I'm gonna release this pair and then I'm gonna release the second pair like not too long after that. And the second pair, I haven't started yet but I have plans for it. I'm pretty sure of the stitch pattern in my head and I'm pretty sure of the yarn. I was going to do it out of a um, discontinued colorway from an indie dyer that I had uh, because it's very autumnal and I loved it. But then I'm like, you know, that might not be the best plan um, just because I want people to be able to maybe purchase the yarn that I knit the sock in. So I um, went back to my stash and this is a little bit different but I think it's going to work out really nicely. This is a skein of Yarn Cafe Creations in her biscotti, yeah, biscotti sock fingering weight which is an 8515. I'm really excited about knitting with this. So soft! And this is her orchard colorway. Um, I bought this a couple of years ago, um, the first time Knit Circus did a trunk show with Christie's yarn, and, um, I do know that she still dyes Orchard, but I think it looks slightly different. Um, this was the first, I think the first go around, and last year we did another trunk show with her, and she also sent us Orchard, and it just looked, it was like more muted, I think, but I figured, you know what, that's okay. I love the green in here. The theme that I have for this, hopefully this pair of socks um, is very like harvesty garden. And I thought that kind of fit with like the pops of red, yellow, green, you know, blue. Eh. It'll work. 
No, I think it's going to be gorgeous. So I'm really excited to work with this. It's been in my stash for a couple of years, like I said, um, and it feels really good to get a couple of skeins of stash yarn used and out and hopefully knit into some beautiful socks. Hopefully the patterns um, you guys will enjoy as well. And yeah, I'm just really excited about that. I've, I've had a couple weeks of inspiration. Um, it just stinks that like it's coming now when I'm about to have the baby and I'm worried that like I won't be able to finish some of these projects. But um, I think starting now, you know, almost having that first sock done, being able to, you know, hopefully write up the pattern and photograph soon like I can give myself several weeks to hopefully like put the finishing touches on there because I know for for a while I'm going to be in no kind of a spa headspace or physical or mental space to um to finish those up so start them now take a break finish them later upload and publish <laughs> okay so I'm going to finish talking about knitting I do have some cross stitch to show you but I'm thinking before I do I have one acquisition to show you but before I do that whew, I'm gonna pull my cozy memory blanket down and I'm gonna show you I did do a couple of squares over the last two weeks last time I had not touched this in you know a month maybe um, but I'm so excited I got three squares done I know it doesn't sound like much, but with, you know, trying, like feeling like I'm on a deadline with a lot of things, I sat down, I knit a few squares, I let myself just sort of enjoy this project and it felt great. So the first square I did, I'm finishing up, I finished up actually the row. So I like squared it, not squared it off, but I finished up the row, this top row I was working on, um, of my homespun house advent calendar from last year and you guys will know that this is the second project I'm getting out of my homespun house advent calendar so I already knit a dust of snow shawl with all 24 colors then I had enough to come in do a square of each one so this entire top row is all homespun house advent from 2019 and I still have some left. <laughs> so putting them in a box, I'm gonna send them to a friend whose mom um, is doing a crochet granny stripe. So um, if she wants to use them, great. If not, there's probably only like 10 grams, not even 10 grams left. Um, I don't think it would be enough to do anything besides, I mean, you could do like a cowl or something by just like, like a magic knot, but I think it'll be, it'll be good for throwing into a crochet blanket. So this one right here was one that I did. I really, really like this color. I remember really liking it when I opened it and um, knit my stripe in my shawl as well. And then this one next to it, which almost has some like Eastery vibes to it. So some pretty pastel colors and it just pulled in that like greenish yellow. I really liked that. And this one actually has Oh, I think I put them next to each other because this one had a little bit of pink. And I'm trying not to do all the pinks, all the purples, like things like that. I noticed like here, it was starting to get really purple heavy. And yeah, I, I'm just trying to like mix them up enough, but also have them like look really good next to each other. So yeah, so these ones were a little bit, I wasn't sure where they were going to go, but I, I like the placement. And I do know which one is going to come next, but I obviously ran out of squares to build on. So I needed to start another row over here. So my length is going to get considerably longer because I still have like 10 more advent squares and I really, really want to do a full row. So I'm going to try... Um, if it just gets to be too long and obnoxious, I will go and start building on top of these guys and making a second row. Um, but I don't know. I haven't decided yet. It's getting long. 
I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but it's getting pretty big. Um, this square down here, I did, I think this past Monday or Tuesday. And this is a fingering weight from Knit Circus. It's called Cottage by the Sea. And it is a 100% merino on our trampoline base. I thought it went really well with this one next to it, those pretty blues together. And this one, if you guys remember a couple years ago, I knit my wedding shawl out of this. So my colors for the wedding were um, very much this like dusty blue, like gray blue. And I knit a lace shawl for myself out of that. It's very nice. I didn't actually ever use it because <laughs> it was in June and, you know, I mean, you just don't want anything wrapped around you that's going to fall off while you're, you know, having fun and eating dinner and dancing and stuff. So I didn't actually use it, but I, we did take pictures and I got some pretty cool pictures um, from my photographer in that shawl. So, so yeah, that's my cozy memory. Um, I forgot to say that... This is another Gnome Knitter Progress Keeper. And this is a, um, a honeycomb. I really, really love that. I think it's super sweet. And I got these around the same time. That was, I was still living in Minnesota at that time. So yeah, that was like four or five years ago. All right, and then to wrap up the knitting portion, I'll show you, oh, I have this to show you. Okay, this is my one acquisition that I got. Um, this is a Knit Circus yarn as well. There's our logo, Strong Woman. Um, and this is a gradient sock set. We dye these together so that you can get a matching pair. Um, it makes knitting matching pairs super easy, which is awesome. Um, and this colorway was being discontinued. This is called Desert Rain. I don't think we have any more in the shop. There's only a few cakes left. This was like the only sock set. So I decided I really, really wanted it. I love the combination of blue and brown and that like golden yellow color in there. I always liked this color. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't do very well with our customers. So we had to discontinue it, but uh, yeah, so this was on sale and I picked that up last weekend, which was my last time in Knit Circus. This whole week I was able to stay home and do work from home. Um, also, I'm starting to transition from being like full, full, full time and having all of my responsibilities to letting a few other people take over. Sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Um, letting a few people take over my responsibilities so that we're ready to go when the baby comes. Um, so I'm kind of like stepping back slightly which means I'm not um, going, I hadn't really been going into the studio or the store, well, not the studio at all, um, the store to do any work um, except for doing our live Instagram videos, which I would do uh, for Knit Circus about once a week and doing virtual shows. I went in there, we did a couple virtual fiber festivals and um, last week I did all the shipping for orders because the girl who usually does the shipping, she was gone, so. Which I actually really enjoyed that. It was a really good like way to break things up <laughs> because I hadn't I hadn't been doing much of that. I, I do mostly like computer work. It was really fun to sort of be in the store again and be hands-on with the product again. So I really enjoyed that. But um, she's back and like I said, I'm stepping back. So it was a good time to sort of, you know, shift some of my responsibilities over. So yeah, I haven't been back and I probably won't be until after the baby's born and after my maternity leave is over. So one last thing about, I'm trying to think if I should show my cross stitch and then show this. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, because this is too special, I'm gonna wait. Um, I've got my cross stitch that I've still been working on so proud of myself. I haven't picked this up in the last couple days, but I'm getting some good progress done. 
I am stitching this, talk about harvest and autumn. This is Autumn Harvest Girl. <laughs> oh goodness. So yeah, stitching that. This is my first like big-ish project that I've done. I just recently picked up cross stitch again and I'm loving it. But yeah, it's it's definitely like a learning curve. I, you know, have learned a little bit of the terminology that has helped me um <laughs> help me achieve some better results. Oh boy, my needle's about to fall out. Um than I was getting before. So okay. I, like I said, I'm stitching Autumn Harvest Girl. I have this on, let's see if I can be just like a floss tuber. Floss tube is like the cross stitch version of knitting podcasts. So they talk about the thread count of the linen. So I'm knitting this, knitting, I'm stitching this on linen. It's a 28 count linen. I'm stitching it two over two, which I know what that means now. And what else? This is just like a DMC linen um, and the, I think it's called like sand is the color. So it's not like white, it's like a beige. Um, so I had this flower and heart done last time and I stitched down the side, the, like the trellis and I stitched the squirrel. Look how cute he is. It still needs the details of like the back stitching and stuff. I haven't done that yet. Um, and then I went, kept going down the trellis. I have to go back and do some of the vines and stuff, but then I started on the deer. And yeah, I'm still kind of a slow-ish stitcher because I'm, I'm still getting back into it. Haven't done too much. Um, so each of these like sections took about two nights I would say yeah like I did the squirrel's tail all like one day like I did the trellis and then came down and did the tail and then the next night I went back did the body and kind of you know started working down this way then I did I think I did the deer pretty much all in one night um I have to go back I just got the floss for the the horns there's like or the antlers I should say the antlers of the deer um, yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun. It's, it's just a lot of fun. That's all I can say. Um, I do have a little, another little acquisition sitting there. That is a needle minder by Simply Serving, right? Yes. Simply Serving. <laughs> um, and it's a, like, Hogwarts letter. And basically it's so that when I'm like switching colors and, you know, kind of, I don't know, I have to set my hoop down or I have to, you know, set it down for some reason, I can just boop, stick my needle on there. It's magnetic. So I don't have to worry about where I put my needle and I don't have to lose it or sit on it accidentally, which I haven't done before, but you know, I'm sure people have, and I'm sure it's very painful. So yeah, that's that. Um, not a whole lot to say about it, except for that I'm just enjoying it. And I hope I just keep going because it has been so much fun. Um, the bag that I have this in, I did find out what company it is from, I believe it's called Bag Aggie. I was looking at my, um, for a different reason, I was looking at my Etsy history today and I went back far enough to see that I bought this like three years ago um, from, I wanna say it's Bag Aggie on Etsy, A-G-G-I-E, Bag Aggie. And this is an amazing bag. It's got so much storage. It's fully quilted. I, I love the handles. Yeah, I, I couldn't recommend this bag enough. For knitting, for stitching, for whatever you wanna use it for. 
it's fabulous. So this is, that's really my only like stitching bag right now. I don't have individual, well, I only have like one project going, so I don't need individual project bags, I feel right now. I just have like all my cross stitch stuff in there. Um, maybe if I start adding like whips, um, I'll get another bag, but I, yeah, I don't really need one right now. So that leaves me with just one last thing to talk about. And that is a beautiful, beautiful gift that came in the mail this week and totally surprised me, totally like threw me off guard. Oh my gosh, blew me away. Um, and it was from my lovely, lovely friends at Bumblebee Acres Yarn. And yeah, I just, I may have cried slightly. <laughs> If you follow me on Instagram, I did put a story up when it came because I was just so excited. I needed to tell someone about it and I needed to thank them like publicly. Um, so I went on Instagram and just started like rambling and yeah. But anyway, I got this beautiful package in the mail and inside was this hand knit blanket for our baby. I love the colors, love the colors. Um, it's soft, it's warm. It has a little bit of like a wooly feel, but not really. It's like really interesting. Like I can tell it's not Merino, but it's like still like nice and I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, it's nice and soft. Um, it actually makes sense why I like the feel of this so much because it is 100% BFL. It's superwash BFL and it's lovely. So she had, a, I kept the tags on there for now. She had a little tag on there, the baby blanket, and then the, the uh, um, information about what it's made out of. So I appreciate that. And then I'm just gonna like, it's, it's, not really cold, but, um, and it's like 78 degrees in my apartment right now, but I don't care. Um, and then on top of that was this guy. <laughs> Sorry, I make weird squeaky noises when I see this toy. I just can't help it. Since I opened it up, every time I see Every time I look at this, like some odd, like bird sounding noise comes out of my mouth. But he is so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> I just, he's so like round and squishy. And he's got a little bonnet on and a little sweater and I just can't handle it. Oh my gosh, I can't handle it. Oh, okay, breathe Jen. So, there's the tag for that. And then it says, so cute. It says the outer is 100% superwash BFL wool. Obviously it's the same that she used for this. And then the inner is polyester and love. Polyester and love is on the inside. <laughs> oh my gosh, so cute. So I know that um, I've like thanked them profusely since and obviously on Instagram as well. But um, Sam messaged me back. She's the older, the oldest daughter uh, from the B family. And she, um, she had written out the card. So I just assumed like she had knit it, which she did. She knit the, the blanket and the, and the teddy. Um, but she said it was um, Mama B, Queen B, I should say, Queen B's idea, which is her mother. Um, and that they, you know, send me something and then Sam knit this for me. And I just, they're just so sweet. And they've always been so sweet to me um, since we reconnected. I knew them when I was younger, which is a whole other story, which is really crazy. We went to the same grade school. We, we grew up like in, in um, neighboring towns and went to the same like Lutheran grade school and stuff. And, um, then reconnected at a fiber show because I thought I recognized them and I was excited to find a, a fiber farm near my hometown. And they're like, and then we realized we knew each other and it was really cool. 
But anyway, um, <laughs> that's a whole, a whole big long story. Um, but yeah, I just feel so lucky that they thought of me and they put, you know, this hard work into knitting something for the baby and yeah. So as you can tell by my face, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I was just completely blown away and yeah, fiber friends are the best, aren't they? So anyway, that's the last thing that I think I have to talk about. Um, I hope you all are doing fabulous. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll probably upload this tonight, Friday night, so you'll have your weekend ahead of you. Um, I hope you get a chance to do lots of knitting or stitching or crocheting um, or whatever it is that you, that you wanna do this weekend to make you happy. Um, I, if I am not going into labor, I will be relaxing and getting a few projects hopefully finished or at least some work done on them. Um, yeah, and just kind of enjoying maybe one of my last quiet weekends for a while. We'll see. We'll see when he decides to come. Um, so my, my due date is next Thursday, which is September 10th. And I, I realized that I could go past that. So we'll see, we'll see how long we do go. But um, yeah, very exciting, very excited for his arrival and I will be sure to post some updates on my Instagram. So be sure to go visit me and follow me there. Um, if you would like to subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. Um, the more subscribers I get, the more thumbs up, the more comments, it just kind of generates um, more viewers and more views of the, of the episode. So I'd really, really appreciate that. Thank you. And yeah, if you are, like I said at the beginning, if you're a new viewer, I'm so grateful that you decided to check out this podcast. If you're returning, you know how much I love you. Thank you so much. And stay tuned. Stay tuned. I don't know what the next month or so will look like, but I'm really hoping that there is some video vlogs, maybe, and then maybe in a month or so, I'll be back to... Um, I'll be back to podcasting. So thanks for watching. Do things that make your heart happy. Be kind to one another, love one another. And yeah, yeah, be good. I'll be doing the same. Bye.